And Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to our first Ask Us Anything of 2020. Last year we had on our, last week we had on our New <laughs> oh, Year's it outfit. Year. Yeah, it was last year. And, uh, oh, it's great to see so many of you in the uh, chat room already waiting to say hi. It's uh, great. Over 60 of you were waiting ahead of time. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland, and uh, welcome. It is a snowy night in Michigan. And that's where we are. Always want to say at the very start of our Ask Us Anything, if it suddenly drops a signal, it's because the internet. Thank you for the thumbs up, everybody. I saw a bunch of them go through there. It's because the internet failed. And sometimes it does. We are operating off of a, a 4G LTE signal, an internet signal uh, from uh, our um, uh, one of our uh, uh, 4G LTE <laughs> things up on the roof. And uh, sometimes the internet gets overused and hopefully that won't happen. So we're pretty excited uh, about all of that. I just love doing these from an RV. Yep. I like being out here. We are in the RV in mm -hmm. our uh, Unity uh, Leisure Travel Vans, uh, Unity FX, and uh, we're packing it up. We're about ready to go on our uh, big uh, winter camp out, and we're heading up to uh, to Quamanon Falls State Park in uh, Michigan this week. Oh, that's something else I'll tell you about <laughs> later on. Uh, I thought I had a link up. There we go. We're going to Taquamanon Falls State Park. It's our winter camp out. We'll be up there. Actually, we're thinking of going up Wednesday, and we'll stay until a week from today. Uh, camping in the snow. We've got, last I checked, about 40 or so, 40 or 50 other people coming, and uh, they've, they've got a bunch of snow. I can't see how much, but a whole lot up there. What did they say? Usually there's two feet. Yeah. Have usually, you heard from them? Yeah. Usually there's a couple of feet and we'll see how that, how that goes. But um, we're, we're pretty excited about uh, about the winter camp out that's coming up. And uh, um, we'll get, uh, let me go on and uh, just say hi to a couple. We always like to say hi to the first people in line. And that was our friend Road Trip Bunny, uh, Buddy, who's our first post. And uh, second post is a question. One, did you ever consider the wonder? Yes, we still are. We think the Wonder's <laughs> pretty cool. That was the first uh, leisure travel van that we used for two weeks. And they that, had one for the different folks in the press to use. And we got a chance to borrow one and uh, give it a test. It was the first time we actually tried a, a RV on the Ford um, Transit chassis, and we came away very impressed. There's a review right here on the channel. If you go back, just search for us, and you'll see it in all of our videos. We're very impressed, but I'll tell you what is really impressing us is the new one. Who was really impressed was Bo. Bo liked the Because there wonder. were, yeah, Bo liked the Wonder because there were two twin beds. Two and, twin beds uh, in the back. In the back yeah. And uh, he liked to sleep on one while we were traveling. He did. And uh, uh, we liked it a lot. And then we got this one. We bought this one ourselves when we're in now. Mm -hmm. The new 2020 Ford Transit. Uh, is really interesting because it's going to be, there are going to be gas versions instead of just diesel. Diesel only is what they are now. And most importantly, particularly for people like the Boonlock, like we do, the new Ford Transit chassis is going to offer all-wheel drive. And um, I think that the Ford chassis is going to be the most popular chassis in small motorhomes. And let me tell you why. Uh, you're not seeing this in the in the so-called RV press because they don't like to do anything that's somewhat negative. And I don't think it's necessarily negative. It's just reality. There is a shortage, a backlog of sprinters. Um, you, the RV manufacturers, all of them, are unable to get a hold of 2020 sprinter chassis right now. The reason is because uh, the new 2020 chassis, made in the U.S. now, by the way, in a plant in North Carolina, Mercedes-Benz plant, the reason why they're in short supply is the EPA, the U.S. EPA, says they want to recertify all of the engines on their, on their diesel sprinters, which, which are the ones used for RVs. Well, they didn't do any real changes at all. Mercedes didn't from 20, the engine from 2019 to 2020. Very minor cosmetic changes on the unit itself. But nevertheless, they got to go through now and reapply for all of those EPA permits. The result is, and this is the bottom line, None of the RV manufacturers can get their hands on 2020 chassis right now. They're in short supply, and there is a massive backlog in orders. I talked to two different RV manufacturers this week, and um, they don't want me to necessarily say their names because, you know, they don't want to be singled out, but they can't get Sprinter chassis. None of them can. They're thinking they're not going to see Sprinter chassis until April. Meantime, 
there is a whole bunch of people who have ordered 2020 chassis and they thought they'd be done in six, eight months. Now they're talking over a year. Uh, so I don't think, you know, I think that you're going to see a, a massive slowdown in sprinters out there in the market because of that shortage. It's a great opportunity for Ford, which has now come alongside the RV industry and is really doing some great things with the Ford Transit chassis. And they're building that Ford Transit chassis. They're making that really a, a great chassis. They've added, as I said, all-wheel drive. And uh, that makes that Ford Transit uh, RV particularly the tall one, the big one, really attractive. Gas engine, all-wheel drive, you watch. Mark my words, it's going to be big. All right, uh, hey, let's get some more. Uh, Head West 90, good, hello, guys. Uh, KK Kayak, welcome from Marquette County, Wisconsin. John Muir's childhood home. You all know who John Muir is. He's kind of next to Theodore Roosevelt, the most important national parks uh, figure in uh, U.S. history for our national parks. Uh, hey, if you have a question, would you do us a favor when you're in the chat room, make put, start it off all in caps with question. If you're going to make a comment, start that all off in comment. And the reason why, tell them why. <laughs> I'm it trying. makes it easier for you to uh, pick out the questions because you're trying to read and talk. You I do am. an excellent job of doing that. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what I'm saying because I'm busy <laughs> looking at that. I, I, make, I put my foot in my mouth too many times. So... Help us out with that, if you will. All caps question if you're asking a question. Because uh, we can't say hi to everybody that's on there right now. There's 218, 222 of you online right now. And a lot of you say hi. And we, we look at them. I love to see it. Like our friend uh, Mark uh, Hopkins. He's now back in South, Central California. Uh, <laughs> Mark and uh, Hitch, uh, they're back there. He's been, all, he's been on the road for a year uh, that we know of now. That's great. Uh, so lots of you that are out there, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Paul Goodwin has a question. How do you like the windows in your Murphy bed? We have a 2019 FX and want to put them in our unit. Those Love the windows. Right up there. Everybody asks Love about that every windows. week. Love those windows. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't, can't put them in? Well, I, I, you know, this is just a hole, a hole that is cut out. You know, it's about that thick. And, uh, you know, it opens up to they everything behind it. it. They framed it with yeah, wood. Yeah, the window, the actual window is back, way back there. You can see mm -hmm. it faintly but in I the love dark. It. And they did that as an experiment on ours. We didn't know anything about it. We, we got thought, it. We thought, we thought they, they all, all came had. that way. So um, I know a lot of the people who have sprinters on order uh, from Leisure Travel Van with the Murphy bed like this, the FX, say, hey, we want those Wendland windows, they call them. <laughs> but they're and not. They do we do want just, them. They're great because... Right now, you know, if we had the windows open, we don't need them because it's, Cause it's 20 cold degrees out there. Out there. Um, you know, it, we'd have cross ventilation. And when the Murphy bed's up like that in the summer. And plus I'm nosy. I like to see out. Yeah. So we love those windows. Mean, yeah. <laughs> that you're nosy? Yeah. Yeah. That goes without saying. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's all been, it's all been fun. Let me take our name off there because yeah. it's distracting to me. You don't need our name. Um does your absorption fridge get cold enough and maintain temperature, especially when it's hot outside? That's so far our, it has. This is our Dometic, our Dometic refridge right here. Opens, yeah, we haven't had any problems. Opens both ways. You know, it opens on the other side as well. Um, yeah, we haven't had any problems. And we've been in some pretty hot weather. We, we spend much of our year in Florida and the southern states, and it's worked great. Um, in fact, it's one of the nicest refridges we've ever had, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I don't think I love it. It's got a nice big freezer. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, hey, our friend Ron Prater is coming. I don't know if it's Prater or Prater, Ron, but Ron will be with us on our freeze out, our winter camp out coming up in Tequamanon Falls. And he says, when going out to dinner, will we all be driving our RVs or is there an attempt at RV pooling? Most there, only have two seat belts. There is an attempt at RV pooling. <laughs> and in Michigan, if you want to take the chance on being a ping pong ball, you don't have to have. Yeah, you have to have uh, two seat belts in the front. You don't have to have a seat belt. For the front and the, in the back. In the front. But lots of people will pool. And uh, really, everywhere we go, there there are enough parking spots. We go out Friday night. We're going into Paradise, Michigan. And that is an awesome spot. The Gastro Pub. We kind of take that over with the snowmobilers who are up there. And uh, there's that gets a little crowded. So, you know, people will. Somebody's going and say, hey, come on, ride with us. And that Because it's happens. not that long of a drive. It's just, yeah, it's like. Eight ten miles down the road, and then the mm -hmm. other place on Saturday night is up at the Tequamanon Falls. It's a microbrewery and a really nice little restaurant, and they have lots of room. 
And again, we're sharing the parking lot with snowmobilers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I uh, look forward to seeing you, Ron. That is one of our fun things. I should say next Sunday, we think there'll be an Ask Us Anything, but we don't know because we're going into an incredibly busy travel time for us now. Um, we got the winter camp out this week. We come back from that. We leave and drive all the way back from Michigan's Upper Peninsula. I got a, uh, yes, the upper peninsula. Hard to do reverse. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Something like that. No, it's like that. Uh, the Upper Peninsula, which will be right about there is where we are. And we come all the way back to Detroit about there. And then we got to get on an airplane Monday morning and fly to Tampa for the yeah, Tampa RV show. Off we got to drop off. So, all this to say, we may end up doing our live a weekly live thing on Saturday morning next week, which would be like, uh, we'll try for like 10 a.m. Maybe from the, maybe from 11. the, maybe 11, 10 a.m. Okay. Well, whatever. Watch Jennifer on snowshoes, but we're going to be doing a video on the clown on falls camp out. So I don't necessarily want to do a live shot and then a video the next week. Cause I think people will say, Hey, I, we're tired of winter. So I don't know. We, if, if we can get back in time and are at a place where we can conveniently do a quick one next Sunday, we will. And then the following Sunday, we won't because we'll be on an airplane flying back to Michigan from the Tampa RV show. We'll tell you more about that all on the social media. You can find that on just our our, our, uh, our YouTube community tab here on YouTube. Follow community. We post everything we do there and uh, we'll let you know. Debbie Jones has a question. What's the one place that you really would like to see that you haven't yet visited? One place. And when are you coming to Ontario? Would love to meet you. We go to Ontario two or three times a year, don't we? Yeah, we used, yeah, to, we used to be up there a lot. We used to be up there every <laughs> month, and, and uh, back when we worked with uh, Road Trek. But uh, we still get to Ontario because it's just it's close to us. It, you know, we're right next to it here in Michigan. But uh, what's the one place that that you really? Her question. I mean, it's what's the one place that you really would like to see that you haven't yet visited? I've got lots of places that I want to see. It's First hard. Place. I think I want to go to Maui and uh, go to the <laughs> National Park. There. Well, I guess we should tell everybody that. Well, we're thinking about it. We think. Well, we're going to. We'll know maybe tonight uh, if we can figure out the airfare and uh, use some frequent flyers that we may end up camping in Maui for a week or two in February. So. Uh, we love Hawaii, and of course, how could you not love Hawaii this time of year? Well, we don't like getting to and from Hawaii, from Michigan. We yeah, don't like flying. We've been there once. Yeah. Well, we've been not. Were we on Maui? No, we were on no. Kauai. Kauai. And we on the Big Kauai. Island. Uh, we'll we'll have more to say about that later on, but we think we're gonna we're, borrow a camper van and do some camping in Maui. Thinking about There's it. It's a national park there that we want to see, and uh, that would be pretty fun. I mean, we have to go there because we have to see that national park, right? That is. Uh, Actually, there are two national parks in Hawaii, I believe. Yeah, uh, there is. Uh, the volcanoes as well. Yes. We're thinking about doing a video on um, our. Well, we're going to. The podcast this week is going to be. We've had. All, we've asked people to call into our voicemail number for the last couple of weeks and share their bucket list for 2020. So we're going to play those back to back. A lot of people. But we're thinking if we can pull this off and find the time to shoot it. Uh, and you can answer here whether you think that would be helpful. Uh, we're thinking about doing a video on our bucket list, where we want, how we want to go this year, and more importantly, how we sort of roughly plan out our routes and where we're going to stay and what we're going to do. If you think that's helpful, give us some thumbs up uh, here in the video or, or give us a comment on what you'd like us to include in that. And if we can pull that off, we will try and uh, shoot that while we're driving and uh, or while we're um, planning in, in the next couple of days, and then I can edit it at night up at Tequamanon Falls <laughs> for next Saturday. So that's kind of what we're thinking about. So let us know about that. Um, all right. Lots of you saying hi, and, and many of you saying really nice things, and we thank you so much for all of those things, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. Here's a question, uh, and don't forget, use question just like Cattle Dog Cruising did there. What are your thoughts on installing an ARB air compressor on a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter where the auxiliary battery is? Uh, I never thought of that. Never thought I would need one. Don't really need one. I mean, I could get a small portable air compressor, I guess, and carry it in storage here. Um, if you think you need an air compressor, go for it. Um, I don't know. I don't think we need one. Haven't yet. Haven't in eight years of 
I don't own one. And in eight years of almost it'd be eight years in March of us doing this, um, you know, 80 percent of the year, uh, I don't think we need one. Jennifer's looking at the question. I'm She's looking got at the her glasses. glasses so you can yeah, I got my hard. glasses so I can see better. Okay. Well, I'll kind of scroll through. And we're just looking for the ones who's put question. Well, you've got to say hi from at least a couple of people. Okay. Well, okay. Here's uh, Bill Sprague. What are your thoughts on the Aldi or Truma as an upgrade? Well, Bill, if you look on the channel, the video we put out yesterday is on our Truma AquaGo instant hot water heater. And what do we think of that? We like it, and uh, you have instant hot water. I mean, we like turn that. it off, we turn it on, we don't leave it on all the time. Not that you couldn't leave it on all the time, but we just don't. And uh, when you want to take a shower, turn it on, you got hot water. Well, you turn it on, and it takes maybe, what, uh, 30 seconds. seconds for the thing to quickly heat up. But we turn it on, and then by the time we go into the shower or start using the hot water for dishes or whatever in the kitchen, it's, it's hot. And then it's just, I mean, you turn the put, and it's instant on. Yeah, you, and it, you can adjust it, you know, hot or hotter. You know, it, it isn't just hot, obviously. Truma has become pretty much, as I said in the video, uh, and you can see the whole video and see how it works, uh, is the de facto standard now for all RVs in North America. All the manufacturers have gone there. Aldi, and we've had an Aldi on one of our previous road treks that we had. Aldi and if you was, like uh, warm floors, it kept the floors warm. Yeah, Aldi was the heater part. And it wasn't the hot water. Um, well, maybe it was, yeah, it was hot water too. It was hot water and heater, and it had heated floors, and we liked that. It Except was really our dog nice. didn't. Our dog didn't like that, but we really did like having the hot floors. Oh, I just said yeah. the word dog. He Bo knows, knows the word dog. You know I, the word dog. Bo wants to say you? hi to everybody. Bo is at our feet where Bo he always goes. Hello, Bo. Dog. Say hi. He yeah. says, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. He says, don't you people know it's dark? <laughs> it's time when you go to bed. Yeah, as soon as it gets dark, he wants so, to go to bed. So, Bill, to answer your question, we love it. We love our Truma. Uh, this unit came with it. If we were to get another unit, we'd make sure it had it as well. Mm -hmm. Truma does make a combination, like the Aldi, it makes a combination heater, hot forced air heater, uh, ducted heat. That's We have ducted heat here. It's 16,000 BTUs, and, you know, it's in the 20s out there now. We're, you can see us. We're pretty comfortable in here. And we'll be camping in the snow in the UP with it next week. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, when using heat, do you use the propane or heat pump as primary source? Thanks. We use the uh, propane. We never have used the heat pump. Um, that's good if you are, you know, you know, where it's like 50 degrees and you just want to take that little bite of the air out. But when it's 20 degrees like it is now, that's not going to do you good. But we also use this. I don't know if you can see over on the galley. Can you see that right there? That's a Lasco ceramic heater and uh, it runs about I think about 1400 watts so it takes a lot of power but if you're plugged into electric which we are here at our home uh, we have a 30 amp supply here that's great and we will supplement in fact that's on right now and it's supplementing the heat in here and uh, when it gets really cold, like below zero, we'll run our regular ducted heater, our suburban heater that comes in our unit, and we'll run that as well. So, uh, but we use the propane. We never use the, the heat pump. Oh, dear. Can you read that question? Our friends Richard and Colleen Pura, they'll be at our winter camp. <laughs> yes. yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, please do. Uh, I'm on a uh, kind of a different eating plan, and I can eat between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. I'll probably alter that. I'll make it maybe 3 to 7, but I can start eating at 3 o'clock, Richard, so bring a lot of it. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, popcorn. Uh, I mean, I could live on popcorn. And, it's uh, your favorite it. food. Yeah. Is the basement heated underneath storage on this? No, it's not. But we don't really have a basement. We just have, on the Unity, we have what would you call a few those? compartments? Those compartments on the outside. Uh, on the Wonder, which has a really neat basement and the garage and all that stuff, that's not heated either. So it's not heated. So and the heat from the inside has to go down to heat that up. I mean, practically. How often do you use do you camp in the RV? We go every month of the year. Now, you know, we winterize this at Thanksgiving. We have have not camped in it. Uh, for about three weeks now, and we will go up north for a week, then we have to fly to Tampa, and then depending on whether we do this 
other trip I talked about at the very beginning of the program or not, uh, then we're heading south and we'll de-winterize in February, in the end of February. And uh, we won't need to winterize it again. And uh, so it, it's not much. Um, all right. You can help me find some questions. Oh, Bo was wanting pets. Oh, Bo was over. He always wants pets. Mm -hmm. How cold can you be safe with pumping? I don't know what you mean by that. Camping, you see me? Or running water? If the water is below, if the water outside freezes, you know, those little mud puddles, if they have ice on them, then, then you need to have yourself anti-freezed up and winterized. So if, if that was your question, I don't know. We will not be using water in our rig. Right. We Well, we will have drinking well, water. Yeah, we'll bring our water. And, uh, and I'll boil coffee. I'll, I'll pour, you know, bottled water and in for my coffee mm -hmm. and when you use the toilet which you can use in winter camping you flush it with antifreeze right right um, okay question given your extensive experience and negative issue with AT&T and that's that story we did a little while ago on them the Togo system to recap AT&T has this new system or, or cut a deal with Togo, a really nice company that's really making some inroads in, in, uh, for RVers to provide this white dome thing called Togo uh, that would provide uh, unlimited internet access for RVers for $360 a year. Great price. Sound too good to be true? It, well, it was too good to be true because uh, less than, I, I bought it mine in the middle of, middle of summer and just before Christmas, AT and says, "No, nope, you know that deal we said would be unlimited. We're not going to do that anymore. You can't have it." I mean, I, I, my contract will go. I can use it until it would have expired. But they don't grandfather it in. So anyway, uh, that's what he's talking about with AT and T. They AT and T is just a greedy company and you know trying to make money. What solution do you think best of for cellular signal amplification? Well, it comes back to me to two things. One, um, the only network now that I I use is Verizon and uh, they used to be a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. I have no vested interest in Verizon at all. It's just the best network, best cellular network out there uh, wherever we go. And I really like uh, their little MiFi card, which um, I don't think you can see mine in there, but if you look, see that little right above the, uh, right above faucet. the faucet here. Um, the faucet, well, you can't see it right over there. The faucet, right about that little white light right there. That is my Wi Fi card, and uh, I will use that. I will also have, I also have up on uh, the ladder of my the back of our RV, I have a uh, a, a, um, a Wii Boost a cellular booster, so it'll boost the signal. It, my data card will pick it up, and then, of course, that radiates it through. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's how we're getting out on the Internet. So that's my solution, MiFi and data. Now, should I tell them about satellites and really confuse them? All this is going to change. If you remember, if you followed us for a number of years, you know that we tried out a system called Chimeta. Bill Gates invested in that company. Remember? I remember. Was that, three years ago? And what it is, it's a really revolutionary antenna that it looks like a pizza box and it actually is flat and it zaps into the satellites. Now it worked adequately, not fast when we tested it, but um, now a whole network, they call it a constellation of low orbiting satellites. And when I say low orbiting, they're, you know, uh, a couple hundred miles up instead of 22,000 miles up where most satellites are. Uh, so these low orbiting satellites, this constellation is constantly going across the country. And this antenna, this Chimeta, will zap onto those and pick whichever one, this one, it'll follow this one. And when a new one comes, it'll grab that one. And it will give you broadband speeds from satellite. Now, the cost is expensive, really expensive, as it always is when new. But eventually, and I'm talking a few years out, that I think will be the standard for our viewers, uh, and it's it's going to be pretty neat. So that's uh, that's great. All right. Uh, question: E-bikes at age seventy will park restrictions become a problem? Right. I have no. Oh well. I don't know. I don't think park. Well, the parks have allowed them in, and then some people yell on trails, 
but I don't think so. Uh, and I don't know why 70 is an issue because you can ride an e-bike until you're 90. You know, they're very simple to use, right? Mm -hmm. You we have, might need training wheels. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you have the... Uh, Step through. Step through, which you don't have to swing your legs. I mean, tell them how that works. It's really easy. I like the step through. It used to be called a girl's bike. I don't, I find it very comfortable. I like to just step through and then get on the bike and take off. Yeah. You don't know what's going to, you don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't. And uh, I mean, look at this thing with Togo. I had six months with a, thinking this is great. If I got a, a weak Verizon signal, I could switch to AT&T. I had the best of both worlds. I do think that WineGuard, the company that makes the Togo up there, They've got so many of them installed now, and I think that they will eventually come up with some kind of a chip or a software upgrade that will work, and uh, hopefully they'll they'll find a solution. Will y'all be in the Carolinas in the foreseeable future? Um, probably. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, we love to kind of run through there. We're in the midst of trying to plan our our big trips this year around some shows that I think we have we're to do appearances. Headed west this year. Yeah, this last year was kind of the Midwest and the East and the South. And this year, I think we're going to do the Southwest, our first tour, which will start off in March, April, uh, April, you know, early April. And that'll take us the, across the Southwest and then up maybe to Yellowstone and then back to the midsection. And then our second trip, which will be probably starting in August, will be West along the Northern Route. Uh, up into Canada and then down through the Washington coastline, down the Oregon coastline into California. So uh, we're going to be on the road probably more than we ever have before with these two trips. And we've got some appearances we have to do. And we're, as we said at the top of the show, we're thinking of camping in Maui next uh, next month. So, And we're experiencing dog discrimination against size. Yeah, we were, we, um, we want to be uh, do a quick trip to, uh, I shouldn't say a quick trip. We want to do a trip to the Keys and uh, probably Fort Myers, Sanibel, Captiva, maybe a little bit of the Everglades in the next uh, month or so. And as I'm looking at places we want to stay, they don't let you have dogs over 30 pounds. These are some of these hoity-toity RV parks, though, so that's not our style very much. But back to Mike's question on the Carolinas, maybe. We were there a couple of years ago. And we were there it. two or three years in a row, actually. So um, right now, I, I don't know. I don't I don't have one. Uh, do you have ham radio in this rig? Uh, I have a handy talkie. I have two handy talkies, actually. But I haven't even bothered to install it. And I don't even carry it. I used to carry my HF rig and a portable antenna. And uh, I might this summer. I probably will because we'll be on the road so much. But, uh, you know, I don't really use ham radio much. It's it's not anywhere as popular as it used to be, and uh, activity is down. And, frankly, I, I think I would get more use out of a CB radio in this for traveling. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, Ray Jones has a comment. He says, I see 210 plus. Actually, I see 324 viewers right now, Ray. Come on, folks, click on that thumbs up icon and show Mike and Jen some love. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> we like seeing love. That's good. And please subscribe to this channel, would you? Uh, we've been, we're growing really well, but, you know, over 100 a day, every day are subscribing. But, man, it, 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 we just please subscribe. We love to see those subscribers. Uh, are you familiar with either Buffalo, New Buffalo or Michigan City? Uh, Chicago daughter wants to do a long weekend and either one. Uh, would either be good for us to try and rent an RV and meet him there. Um, New Buffalo is up near, I think, on Lake St. Clair. Wow, look at all those thumbs up. On Lake St. Clair in Michigan. I think that's the one. There's also, no, that's down in the s southwest Michigan. Uh, I think down near uh, right where Lake Michigan turns into Indiana. And uh, Michigan City, Indiana uh, is right near the n one of the newest, I would say the newest, but it's now the second newest national park, the Sand Dunes there. And that's great camping if you can find a place down there. Lots of campgrounds. So I'd say either one of those is great because then you can go tour the sand dunes and it's a, you can find a, you know, go to RV Share or Outdoorsy and, and rent one and meet them there and you'd have a great time. Uh, did you ever get a flat tire? Yes. When I was driving, somebody was pulling alongside of me and pointing or carrying on. I'm just like, and didn't know what they wanted, and then they did it a second time, and then they gave up on me, and then the tire, tire started really going flat, and I thought, uh-oh, 
I've got a flat tire. And what what was involved with that? Oh, I well, there wasn't any place to pull off, so I thought, well, I have to drive until I can find a place to pull off. You know how you get sections of road where you cannot pull off? And then we pulled off, and luck was with us because we were able to find a place where we could get the tire replaced. And we had lunch and came back, and yeah. it was all fixed. Yeah, we really lucked out. But yeah. I was driving. And I was really impressed the way you handled that. Did I have another way to handle it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty bad. You hit. It was one of those gators. You know what a gator is, where a truck sheds a tire, and you know it's a big scandal. We've had stories on our blog about that. And it hit that, and it flipped it up, and it took out my mirror, my right mirror too. Remember that? Oh, now I'm thinking when I hit the pothole. I thought I hit a pothole when I was driving when I got that. You're thinking you hit something because it took out the mirror. Remember, I, I went out and I got gator. Oh, that was something else. I was a else. passenger when that was we two incidents. Two incidents. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. We hit a gator, and it it didn't do any damage except to the mirror, mirror. and I was able to fix that up and no, duct tape I... it. The flat was a different story. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah, uh, but it's you know I mean, who wants a flat tire when they're driving? Oh, and then another time we almost ran out of gas when I was driving and there was no place to pull off, and I was very upset. Yeah. I mean, you don't <laughs> want to run out of gas. You can read that one. Oh, you're an adorable couple. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate all your videos. You are. You are. Yeah. Not so much us, me, but yeah. You know, I wish you guys knew me back in my investigative reporter days because I was, they called me Bad News Wendlin. And, but I, this life that we have now where we're telling fun stories and being able to, to work on them together and travel with our dog and see the country, it's just... We have to pinch ourselves, so we are happy. And being able to do it with your best friend and your lifelong traveling companion and your bride makes it even better. So thank you, Susan. And uh, Susan says she's going to get a Unity uh, center bed in May, she hopes. Hope you do, too. <laughs> if it's 2020, you might be waiting. And uh, she is in Kentucky. I like that center bed. Yeah, I do, too. I like the wardrobe on both sides. Yeah. Uh, Matthew will... LTV let us buy a van made for a show before the show begins, or at least connect us with the dealer. Uh, they don't do factory direct, so you got to deal with the dealer. And um, what should you do? Go look at the dealer, what he has in stock, or somehow online. Yeah, go see what. what yeah, go see what the dealer has. Because I mean, they sell. They sell really quickly. Yeah, and, and you know, at, the, at an RV show, most of the stuff you see are from the dealer's lots. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe they drive a couple down. And. You know, if you were really sharp, you'd go to the a dealer and say, "Hey, I know you're gonna. Hey, you have to haul some of these over to the RV show. Uh, I'll save you hauling it. I'll buy it. You don't have to haul it. What will you? What can I get for it?" But then they might want to haul it there just so everybody can see it. That's true. To place orders, and you then still you pick it up. But then you say, the "Hey, show. yeah, you pick it up after the show." But you get mm -hmm. your best deals at a at a show because they don't want to put those things back and have them sit in the inventory on the on the lot. So. Uh, all right, Jared asked, what are our plans for the year? And I guess that's what we're going to kind of work on this video. But as I said, Jared, earlier, if you just tuned in, we're going to do the southern tier of Southwest. And then we're going to do a northern trip later in the summer. And around that, we've got some appearances we do at shows, some gatherings we do, um, some of our books that we're researching and things like that. So, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, any expectations that we'll see any new road treks in Tampa? In the next two weeks. Maybe. I don't know. I was just looking at their stuff today. And they don't have much. They're not even doing much with social media. I would imagine. Like all RV manufacturers. They're having a difficult time getting new chassis. For the Sprinter. Mm -hmm. They're building a lot on um, the Dodge Ram Promaster. And they can get those chassis. And they're also about to build. On uh, their new unit called the Haven. On the Ford Transit. So. I would think that we'll probably see them at Tampa. I'd be surprised if we didn't, owned by a new, a new group called Rapido from France. I would think that they would show the Haven, uh, the Ford Transit version, and also uh, a lot of their own ProMasters, uh, which, uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm sure they'll be there. And, and they had some older chassis. I, I think we're going back to 2018 chassis. Uh, from Sprinter, and they may be building out and, and have some of those. But. So this is a good time to buy Ford stock? Well, I don't I'm know. Just I'm just joking. I don't know if it's happening. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like everybody wants those Ford chassis. Yeah. Uh, 
any chance that LTV would use the gasoline Mercedes? I think so. I, I don't know. You know, we don't work for them. Um, we have kind of a, they, they help sponsor some of this, the, our, they have ads in some of our platforms, but we don't work for them. Uh, we certainly use their products. We love it. We, we're buying this. This is our rig. Um, they don't own this. We own this. We're, we're buying it. Uh, and uh, I just got my Michigan plates on it, actually, last week. Yeah. That was a, that was a, <laughs> holy <laughs> cow. That's because we didn't do it right. Well, we did do it. Right. Well, we didn't. You we can make an appointment. Right. But I waited, like, there were we 167 were people ahead of us when we went to get our plates for this. <laughs> well, uh, um, we all became family. Trying to catch up on your videos. What unit are you in now? Boy, you must be way behind because we have been in this one almost a year now. This is our Unity uh, from Lisa Travel Van. So, Kim, you've got a lot of catching up to do to find out how we ended up there. Oh, I love it when other people answer them. That's great. Thank you, guys. And feel free to do that because sometimes I can't get to the questions and you see them. You can answer them for people, too, if you already know the answer. Uh, uh, so that's that's uh, that's pretty good. Um all right, Bill Sprague wants us to do our bucket list and how we're going to plan for it. All right. Have you traveled through Lake Severe, Superior Provincial Park, Sault Ste. Marie, to Wawa? Uh, no, we haven't done that route. We've been all around Lake Superior, but we haven't done that. And we've done, uh, oh, gosh, what's the provincial park that we did over by Tobamori? I love that Canadian park. My goodness, that's no, it's beautiful. It's escaping me right now. I can't think of it either. But... Um, uh, Canadian provincial parks are, are stunning. That's that's great. Would you advise Garmin GPS for RV or can I use the GPS I use in my car? Yeah, use the one in your car just if you can do it. The better thing is just to, is if your radio will do it, if it has CarPlay or Android Auto, is to use that. That is the best system out there. CarPlay, Apple CarPlay for directions and uh, Android Auto. Um we use that 95%, 98% of the time, and it's it's great. Um, let's see. Here's a question from Charles. Bought a 91 Airstream van, completely gutted it, re renovated it, converted 4x4, four four, includes a 100-gallon fresh water tank. My cost under $7,500. Awesome. Thoughts? Good for you. Yeah. Uh, if you can do that, man. Uh, I'm not allowed to use a screwdriver or a hammer. <laughs> or a drill, or anything that could put holes in this or damage it, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Hey, I let you vacuum yesterday. What happened? <laughs> Look at that question. Have you ever done an overnight to Frankenmuth? If so, where? We'd like to return again. Staying with Yogi was nice and very convenient, but are there other places? There's about six RV spots in, in Frankenmuth. We just were up there last week. Yeah. And they're all closed right now. But um, and there's about six of them. They're all very convenient to Bronner's Christmas Wonderland and, of course, uh, Zender's Chicken and uh, the Bavarian Inn Fried Chicken and all the shops and the shopping and the water parks and everything of Frankenmuth, Michigan, which is a great little it's town. It's a great outing. I mean, uh, it's a fun place to, just, to go. Uh, there's, just do a search. There's a million of them. There's certainly Yogi Bear, but Yogi Bear, uh, but um, lots of lots of nice looking parks, but they're all closed for the winter right now. Is Yukon Arctic Ocean in a future plan? Man, I would love to go there. Me too. You would? Yes, of course I would. Now, now they all know that, <laughs> that I've talked about going up that way for the last four years. I know. And I still, at top of my bucket list would be the Yukon and then into Alaska. And, but that's like, really, that would be pretty much our whole year. The way yeah, I don't want to go up for a be, week or two weeks, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and then we gotta have Mr. Bo happy. Yeah. Maybe we get far enough away from people he can have his free time to run. Are you planning a visit to Chautauqua Institution, New York as well? I love all your travels. Plus I go to Fish Creek too. Fish Creek in the Adirondacks. Um, not Chautauqua, New York, no. We have been there once. We in have been beautiful there. Beautiful place. But we will be back to Chautauqua Lakeside, uh Lake Erie. The, uh, first, the week first week of August, August, and we're going to be lecturing there. We're going to be doing um, a couple of lectures, and we're going to do a meet and greet on a Saturday night at the, that awesome little campground there. And I will tell you more about that later on, but we will be there at uh, Lakeside Chautauqua on Lake Erie, and they've invited us back, uh, and uh, we'll we'll be lecturing. We'll do a couple of presentations. And, and I'm not fun. teaching aqua classes. And you're not teaching? Okay. I bet you do. 
she, last time we were there, she went to take an aqua class and she ended up teaching it. Hey, our friend Bob Zagami in New England is there. Hey, Bob, happy new year to you, man. I don't know if you're going to be in Tampa, but Bob, we're heading there. Uh, we'll be there from industry day week from Tuesday all the way through the show. And we invite you there. Hey, if anybody else is going to Tampa, I want to invite you to uh, tell you our schedule there. We'll do this next week, but just in case we don't get on next week. The Tampa show uh, runs, uh, um, and we'll be there, uh, it runs January 15th through the 18th. We'll be there every day, and we'll be doing a meet and greet from 2 to 3 p.m. every afternoon, except Sunday, uh, at the uh, Leisure Travel Vans display. And then on Thursday, the 16th, Thursday the 16th, there's a big party. Um, among. Uh, we'll be there, and we'll have some giveaways for people. And a, a number of other uh, RV influencers and other YouTubers will be there as well. It'll be a big party. It's at a place called the Wing House. And that starts at 6 o'clock. If you find us, ask for an invitation. We'll be running all over the Tampa show. If you're going, you'll see us, I'm sure, because we'll, we don't have a golf cart. Some of the other influencers need a golf cart because they can't walk around. Hey, oh, we, you mean we could have a golf cart? I, don't I mean, know. we don't have to walk. Yeah, carry I got to carry all that gear. But we, um, if you see us, ask for an invitation. We'll hand you one. But come to that. It's a fun Thursday night party. A lot of our friends that are other uh, that do what we do, and we actually we have a pretty close community of other RV influencers that we actually are all good friends. Most of us, all of us, you know. Um, and uh, we'll all be hanging out at that uh, at that show on Thursday. So uh, come to the Wing House. It's right next to the fairgrounds. And uh, Bob Zagami, if you're still, if you are there, we would love uh, love to see you. We haven't seen you since. Uh, what did we see, Bob Elkhart? I guess right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, have you checked out? Oh, he's talking. To, he's he, Ray is answering Davis about Harvest Host. Uh, yep, there are Harvest Hosts up there as well. Uh, did you see that Airstream is recalling some 2018 and 19 interstates due to incorrect OCC ratings? Uh, that's something anybody looking to get an RV should be aware of. OCC are um, uh, occupant cargo capacity, occupant and cargo capacity. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, yeah, it happens a lot, you know, on all of them. But uh, so you always want to know how much cargo, how much, because we're cargo. Bose, 65 pounds of cargo. Water. Uh, when you travel with fresh water, that's cargo. If your black tank is filled, that's some pretty stinky cargo. So you need to know all of that and what your rating is on your RV. It's usually uh, on the door, uh, but ask the dealer when you buy it or, or the manufacturer of all that. Uh, all right. Uh, somebody says 260 watching. Actually, it's 360, according to my thing right now. Well, that's good. Uh <laughs> Can you read that question? Did you get tired of answering the same questions? Um, no. You know, I used to, Eric, I used to say, I already answered that. But then I realized that, you know, the nature of this is people come and they go and and they they, they miss it. But they are many times they're exactly the same questions. Hopefully our answers are the same. Sometimes they're different. <laughs> Sometimes we learn stuff, you know, that, that we didn't know the last time we answered the question. But uh, no, uh, it's always, uh, it's always, uh, it's always a privilege that people would, would want our opinion for a question. So, uh, so we, we try not, we don't get angry. Uh, watching for the first time is Diana. Thank you. Welcome. Now let's make sure you subscribe, Diana, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for your videos and thank you for watching them. Uh, now we got to figure out how we're going to do that, how we're planning our trip, but we'll show you some of the books we use, some of the maps we use, some of the software we use, how we kind of keep a, try to plan for our 330 rule. I think that'd make a good video. Yeah, uh, so we'll we'll try that. Um, all right. Uh, what's the best gadget that you couldn't live without in the RV? Ta da! Well, right this minute, that little heater. <laughs> <laughs> that, that heater I showed I'm you. I'm thinking you, know, you turned off the. I turned off the main heater, heater because it was running. But now it's getting, getting cold. Closer to yeah, we don't have any heat. On. This is it's working out good here. for me. Yeah. You can get really close. And uh, I'm watching rain. I'm hoping it's That's not, not rain. Ice up. That's snow. Why? Well, it's snow. It's because it's, it's warm in here ice. and it's it's okay. melting. As long yeah. as it's not ice. No, it, it I like snow. Do not like ice. So right now, Jennifer's favorite <laughs> gadget is uh, that uh, little ceramic heater. Uh, we've turned off the main heater uh, because you know it was it's, too it's hot. Ducted, it was kind of noisy, and it would. I didn't want to make any confusing noise for you. But let's see. The favorite gadget for the RV. 
yeah, it goes back and forth, you know, so many different things. You know, for me now, it's probably, probably my, um, probably my uh, automatic levelers. Oh, I guess yes. I could call that a gadget. That, that's an option. I was thinking the awning that if it gets windy. It, With the wind it sensor, closes. yeah. That's, itself, that's nice. You don't have to worry about that, even though we do say put your awning, close your awning at night. Don't leave it open. Things can happen. I do like I do like those levelers, but in terms of just a pure gadget. Um, now, a gadget, I'm thinking something that we added or yeah. something that's Gosh, you know, I'm looking around. I've got all these that, things I see. That we you think know. is wonderful. Um, my indoor, outdoor. Oh, I gotta put How about our instant hot water? Is that considered a gadget? No, that's, that's an accessory, a, I think. Yeah. Um, gadget. Maybe my uh, WeBoost cell phone uh, thing. I I added a uh, ladder at the back so I can go up on the roof because uh, it's just kind of fun to go up on the roof sometimes. <laughs> and, and I'll I'll clean off if there's a lot oh, of leaves. Just, deep down within, you want the two of us to stand up. And yeah, and go like this with our hands up in the air like everybody that's else. That's what everybody else. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna make get, it, you're going to want Bo up there too. I can I can Bo see this is all coming. going up there. <laughs> so uh, probably the WeBoost um, cell phone booster signal. The absolute one I couldn't live without would be my Verizon MiFi, the, the, the MiFi uh, cell phone thing, which we're using right now for the Internet. So that's probably the best. What and about you? I like, ha I always want to know what the temperature is outside as well as inside. I like having that feature. And we have, uh, and we've had that in all of ours. i got to put new batteries in it, but that is right. Uh, the white rectangle. Right there, right above this little, that's my heater control there. And right next to Bo's picture. That is an indoor outdoor. I would like thermometer. it better if it. Uh, I could read it all the time. I did. You have to push a button. Yeah, you can. So I that... turn off the light because you don't like to sleep with lights on. Oh well, like right, you know. But uh, right now the batteries are dead, and I got to replace the batteries. So I have a little outdoor sensor in the back that I just Velcro on. It stays on. Even in our home, and we have yeah, a projection. Have a, clock. We have a projection clock in our home. So you just open up your eyes and so you can see what time degrees, it is. You know. I'll see what temperature outside. Temperature. Inside. I think that's what you mean. Those are. And it changes, so we love them all. We love all of our gadgets. Um, due to limited outside storage, especially for large items, do you pack any outside equipment inside the rig, like in the shower? Ah, uh, Lawrence knows us. Huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. You've been looking in here. And uh, I, I said we have to stop that. We have to stop that. We've the, got to pack um, better. This particular model doesn't have as much outside storage as I'd like. We can't. Jennifer wants her. The one thing she wishes we carried was uh, a gravity chair. We call them. And we what have. Call I call chair? it look at the sky chair. And Mike yeah. has, saw somebody driving down the road. They had a cooler in the back. They had uh, chairs tied on their ladder in the back. And they a lot just of had people stuff do that. Tied all over the place. And That's I, what I was said, do. Can I say what I said? Sure. I said, I don't want to be the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, with everything, <laughs> our laundry and everything hanging on yeah, you know, all over the rig the everywhere. They just put, they just, they'll, they just uh, bungee and then cord he's uh, that chair. Determined the back because of the he ladder. has this ladder, my chair is going to be tied to that ladder, and I can see the chair falling off somewhere between here and there. What do you think? Should I put the chair on the ladder? Tell okay. her that okay. or, so or not? So I lost confidence when we took the lawnmower in to get it sharpened. Oh, and you put it in the that. trunk. <sighs> trunk. Trunk. And um, I said, it's going to fall out. And it did. <laughs> going up <laughs> going up the hill. hill and then it's rolling down well, the road. Oh, my. How did I get that? I guess I had to we, run down we the had road. To, we had to pull off the road, and both of us ran out and oh. got it. Luckily, nobody was behind. Yeah. I shouldn't tell people that, though. That was in our don't, car. Don't ever follow us too close. Yeah, don't follow us too close. <laughs> anyway, I think it's perfectly acceptable to, vel to uh, bungee cord her gravity chair, uh, anti-gravity chair, on the back of the ladder but she says no so no let me know what and you i don't think. want it in the shower i mean i don't want it in banging up everything yeah uh sydney hello from louisiana uh cajun country um he's gonna be crawfish season pretty soon uh is your travel leisure van considered a class b or c how much fresh water can you tank hold and how much does your gray tank i just looked that up and I put it in the blog post I did on Truma. Let's see. The gray tank is 37 gallons, I think. 27 gallons? Darn, I forgot. <laughs> and the fresh water is about 25 gallons, I think. 25 gallons of fresh. 30, 20. He's going to have to go online and look. Yeah, go online. Leisure Travel Vans, look under Unity. I just looked that up yesterday. And I believe I wrote it 
it's in the blog post at rvlifestyle.com, the one I did on Truma. And if you scroll there, I think I put how much the capacity was. Um, and this is a C. Yeah. Now this is, yeah, they call it technically, it's kind of a marketing term. They call this a B plus because it's not, it doesn't look like the traditional C with the big cab over part. Although I think it kind of does. Um, no, the, the C's are, you know, this calling it a B plus, not having that bed. The bed up there. But it's, the it's seats. yeah for insurance purposes and on the title, it is a class C. It is a C. Class C. And I did look up that. It's 25 feet, one inches long, and it is seven feet. Oh, I forgot. It, it's got to go to the page. Seven feet something wide. We just had too many. And it's a little over 10 feet tall. So there we go. Uh, all right, Comment? looking through. Uh, let's see. Will you be attending the Milwaukee RV show or the Chicago? Nope, nope. We we would do shows every week if we went to mall, and they're a lot of work. And besides, it's kind of, you know, you sort of see the same stuff at every show. So we tend to do just the big ones. We do the um, Tampa Super Show, which is, you know, a must-attend event in January in Tampa. That's a no-brainer, right? 80 <laughs> degrees. Uh, we usually do Hershey. We do the California RV show. We try and do the Elkhart Open House. This year, we're not sure about doing um, Hershey, and we're not sure about doing um, Elkhart. I think we want to do more things in Tampa. And in April, we do the Super B RV show out in Phoenix, which is just small uh, motor homes. Because that's... We like our Bs and Cs. Uh, yeah. So, so Not that good. we don't like A's and fifth wheels. Have you ever driven the Alaska Highway headed north? It can be rough on the rig. I don't think it's so uh, it used to be, you know. I remember... But no, we haven't. And that's on my list. I'd love to go do it. But I remember the first, uh, first year, seven and a half years ago, we went to a seminar on RVing in Alaska. And there was some guy there very detailed guy, and he had a seminar on Alaska. Remember Everything that? that could go wrong. And all he did is talk about... All he was was negative. We got up and we walked out. Yeah, we, I've never done that. Walked right out. And you got to put Screen wire, over screens over your, your headlights and, and your radiator, and a stone can do this, and you got to have a spare tire, and you got it on the roof, and you got... It was just every possible thing that could go wrong. Man, I don't want to... If that's We, we just left. got up and left. So uh, we we've got enough things to see. But it's here. it's much better than it ever used to be, and it's it's uh, it's great. Uh, here in the UK, we wave to other motorhomes. Do you wave in the US? We do all the time. Uh, yep, uh, constantly. So uh, yeah, I think it's kind of like Jeep owners. You, and, yeah, usually you know, it's just um, people who have the same make as you do. You yeah. wave to. Uh, but I wave to everybody, so it's all pretty good. Uh, hi from Fort Worth, Texas. Thanks for the Florida ebook. Planning to use it later this spring. Thank you. That's our latest uh, ebook, which is um, uh, our seven day adventure guides. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of those. If you've never seen them, you can find all of our guides there. They're aimed, they're little RV tours where to stay, what to see, how to do it in seven stops, seven days, 10 days, 14 days. And our latest one is on the Florida Gulf Coast. And that's what Cindy was talking about. So thank you guys. Uh, um, let's see, Edward, comment, when we were driving New Jersey to Tampa, we had issues finding dog-friendly places for dogs larger than 30 pounds. We need a good-sized freezer for overnight stays. Need to get that RV. Um, yeah, lots of places, you know, we just talked about that in the video, that, you know, we all love our dogs and we love traveling with them, but, you know, there, it comes at a cost because, um, because of other owners, largely, who are irresponsible, there's a lot of restrictions on dogs, and, uh, and that's good. Uh, let's, uh, any new travel guides planned? Thanks, loved you guys. Yes, we're planning one on the west coast of, or the east coast of Florida. We just did the Gulf Coast, and now we'll have one coming out soon. Our next one will be on the Atlantic side, uh, down to the Keys, and uh, that will be, that will be coming good. Salvatore says, I turned on that subscription bell. Thank you for hitting that. And that little bell will just notify you when we have new videos out. So you'll get like a little, hey, there's a new video that was just posted. And a lot of people like to know that. We always have people say, hey, I didn't know you had that video out. So when you subscribe, you, you won't get that by default. It's turned off. So you got to click that icon to, to have it go. 
Tom McAllister, uh, also known as uh, Tomcat, says, I'll see you guys in Tampa. We look forward to that, Tom. Uh, that's always fun. Um, Tom is uh, also in a unity, I think, now as Tom well. Tom and Kathy. Yeah, and we'll see you guys there. Maybe we can grab uh, dinner or something. For sure, come to that Thursday night party. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it will be really good. Um, Flint Firestone, when will you be in the Keys? We're in Marathon until May. Hey, send me a note. Where should we stay? Uh, yeah, I would love to stay in Marathon. I like Marathon a lot. In fact, I would stay in Marathon and then just drive the rest of the Keys. But it's really hard. I did a little bit of looking in the last uh, couple of days, and it's almost impossible to get a spot. Uh, you know, So that's the trouble with places like the Keys, which are so gorgeous. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to uh, love to find, stay a few days down there and just... Uh, just uh, chill out and enjoy it um let's see um uh, in fort myers uh there's only one rv on beach park that allows all dogs and beach coconut rv park mm. okay that's good to know and uh, fort myers is a great spot all right we're running out of time yeah uh, kim says your uh section says you're longtime journalist are you tv people my husband and i are radio people uh, Kim, if you look at rvlifestyle.com, click the about section. I talk about uh, my background. I spent 40 years as a journalist, starting out in radio. And then I went to print newspapers, and I worked in newspapers many, many years, large newspapers, traveled the world as an investigative reporter. Then I went into television and um, worked for NBC. I still do a weekly uh, uh, report that goes out to every NBC station in the country, what I'm known as PC Mike. It's about technology. And um, we thought we'd get out of straight media. And uh, now look what we're doing. We're doing videos with the YouTube. We're doing podcasts, which is much more fun than radio. And uh, we're still writing and we're having a ball. Uh, so good for you. But radio was always my first love. I started off, my whole interest in being a journalist, I started off, I made an illegal radio station when I was 12 years old. And uh, that was fun. Uh, do you subscribe to a roadside assistance company such as Good Sam? Triple A, FMCA, have you used one? Never have had to use one. Thank goodness. We have two years of roadside assistance with uh, this unit from the manufacturer that came with it. We also are members of the FMCA and have their policy, obviously. And I've also joined Good Sam, so I'm in all of those things. But you don't have to do that. Usually your manufacturer that you buy it from uh, or the dealer often will throw that in. Uh, so it works out uh, pretty good. Um, how do you protect your vacant home when you're gone so much? Uh, do you live in a condo? Do you hire a house sitter? We have house sitters, uh, friends who stay in it. We have a security system. We have cameras. I'm alerted anything moves inside. I get an, a notice. Um, it's a house and uh, we've got great neighbors. Um, but usually we, we have somebody that stays in it when we're gone for extended periods of time. So it's always, it's always occupied. And, uh, um, you know, you could always worry, uh, so let's take a quick look. Boy, lots of you. I wish we could uh, wish we could answer and comment on every one of your messages, but we're running out of time here. And uh, we always limit this to an hour. People even complain then. They say, it's too long. It's too long. But uh, uh, Now, that always amazes me because the answer to that is, Yeah, if it's too please. long, don't. Yeah, but they get, <laughs> you know, people yell at me long, for it's too long. You uh, just got to leave. Go do what you got to do. Please be on alert for the watt fuel cell at the Tampa. I hope that technology catches on. Rex, I don't think it was ever ready. You know, we were told that it was going to be available in October uh, by the company that was working with them. And that was not true. And it was a misrepresentation. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. Great people that were in that company. I know they put a lot of hope and trust in the company that was going to market it for them. If we do hear anything on it, I will let you know. But uh, it's uh, it's hard to hard to say. You know, I think we can leave and they won't miss us. They're, everybody's having lots of little conversations. Yeah, I love going. you guys. <laughs> seeing, I love seeing you guys talking next to us there. Uh, hey, Rome, Italy, near St. Peter's Square. Hello, Jan. Thank you for the comments and them saying we're here. It says uh, I love to follow you. How's Bo? Bo's sound Bo's asleep. Bo's sleeping. Yeah, he is sound He's asleep. He's laying right uh, by us. Uh, uh, Zephyr says, I heard that Togo is going to unlock their modem for other carriers besides AT&T. I hope so. I hope they do, and I hope I can just plug my uh, Verizon SIM card in, and uh, and we would be great. Uh, so uh, that would be uh, that'd be pretty good. Um, 
let's go quickly through this. Lots of you say we're going to see us in Tampa. We're glad to hear that. Uh, we'll be in Tampa, many saying. Uh, if someone was thinking of moving to Australia and want to move with towable RV camper, can they do or sell or buy in Australia? Buy in Australia. <laughs> yeah, just buy it there if you're going to move to Australia. What a mess Australia is right now. So we those fires. So those four folks is the fires. But yeah, you just buy there. Uh, another question. Have we heard anything about road trek? Not a thing. They're very quiet. I don't know. I think they're probably affected by that same shortage of Sprinter chassis. This Mercedes shortage is really a big thing. It and is I can't a really big thing. that it's going to take so long for the government to test these things. Well, you, you know, everything takes time and paperwork. But uh, the last I heard it was... Uh, it was uh, they thought April they'd start getting them, but hopefully... I think Mercedes would be really upset. I mean, they build their factory. But see, Mercedes doesn't care because they've sold so many to Amazon. That's Thousands true. and tens of thousands. And Amazon, you know, is continuing to buy them. That's their primary audience, the RV market, compared to what Amazon... Amazon bought the first order was for 30,000 sprinters. 30,000! And the RV manufacturers right, maybe so Mercedes are, isn't getting you know, hurt at all 5, by all this red tape. Somebody Just else, us. somebody else calls us adorable. <laughs> Dan, she can be adorable, but I am not adorable. Uh, you have to understand, this is this investigative reporter who yeah covered the mafia. Yeah, that was my Crime. beat. That was my beat. Uh, Okay, boy, there's so many of you mm -hmm. on tonight. We love seeing it, and it, it's it's great. I wish we could stay longer, and. Uh, uh, we'll see what we can come up with. I'm looking for one last question, and I don't see it quickly. And it's right up there at after eight o'clock, so we're going to be uh, going to be out of here. Listen, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we'll put our schedule on. We're hoping to do a live uh, feed from our winter campout next Saturday morning, about 10 a.m. Eastern time on YouTube. So um, just look at the channel here. When we do a live thing, we schedule it, and you can see that when you just go to the channel, the RV Lifestyle channel, and uh, and we'll try and do it from the snow and give you a quick little look at what that's like. And we'll also um, hopefully be on next Sunday night. Depends on our travel schedule back from the UP. There could be a blizzard. Who knows? And uh, um, we've got sometimes a, they close the Mackinac Bridge. Sometimes they close it, and uh, we'll do our best to do a, a even if it's just a short hello, how are you? Because we'll want to tell you all about Tampa. But it's going to be a crazy week. We leave Wednesday for the UP for our camping trip in the snow. And then we come back Sunday. And then Monday morning, we fly to Tampa. We don't have time to drive there. We spend the whole week at the Tampa RV show. And we'll be doing lots of live stuff from there. And then after that, we're thinking Hawaii, maybe? Wouldn't that maybe. be a fun camping trip? Maybe. Uh, certainly Florida that's, that's kind of right amazing. after that. And then our big trip to the Southwest. So lots of lots of stuff coming up. You guys are great. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and give us one more thumbs up before uh, before you go. Uh, God bless you. We're Mike and Jen with Bo sleeping on our side. <laughs> Happy trails.